putting ink to paper uh, and and doing it in such a way that it's with a typewriter it's it's almost like permanent because you're you're putting that ink right into the paper because you're you know hitting a key and it's sort of slamming into the paper and embedding that ink in there so so you really it really makes you think about what you want to write uh, and uh, so you have to you know, give thought to that because there, you know there are backspace keys, but there are not often any delete keys. Uh, so so it really makes you put thought into what you want to say. Typewriters are enjoying a big revival, and Waterloo resident Curry Russell is swept up in the nostalgia revolution. What began as a pandemic passion project has evolved into a thriving side hustle. Russell is one of a handful of people in Ontario currently equipped to buy, sell, and repair these majestic machines. But he's also part of a dynamic global community, a typosphere, where enthusiasts exchange and savor snail mail and conduct weekly type-ins to share knowledge, advice, and love for these vintage marvels. My name is Curry Russell. My company is Willow Creek Typewriters. Willow Creek Typewriters uh, in Waterloo, we sell and service uh, typewriters from the early 1900s all the way through until most of them stopped being made in the 1970s, 1980s. Well, in the typewriter world, we call it, what is your typewriter origin story? So my typewriter origin story is back in early 2020, before the pandemic, I was on a work assignment in Montreal and uh, had had arrived for uh, to work there for a week and my favorite pen had run out of ink and uh, I thought where am I gonna find refills for this erasable Japanese pen and so I found a stationery shop that was located near McGill University and uh, hiked up there uh, and this was, it was January and so we hiked through the snow in Montreal and went to this stationery shop and it was like being in a candy shop they had everything you could imagine and uh, so but they as I was leaving they had typewriters for sale in their front display window and uh, they reminded me of how when I was a kid I would play with my dad's typewriter and my dad moved to Canada from England in 1967 for a job at the University of Waterloo and one of the things that he brought with him at the age of 23 was a Hermes rocket typewriter and he told me that his father said why are you dragging that thing with you to Canada and but I remember him using it all the time and uh, as a kid I would pull it out and play with it and so it just brought those memories back to me seeing these in the in the window there in Montreal and I thought well I'm not gonna buy one here and drag it home on the flight with me uh, but when I get home I need to find myself my own typewriter and so uh, that Saturday we went out to Wellesley to a little uh, antique shop and there was this red uh, Olivetti Valentine typewriter and uh, just so happened it was the 15th of February or something like that and and picked up this typewriter I didn't know much about it other than having done a little bit of research I found that it had been featured in the New York Museum of Modern Art and uh, I thought well that's cool and it's a bright red typewriter so that's good enough for me so picked that up and found that there was this whole world out there about typewriters all different makes and models and history to them and I thought I need to find more typewriters so, so we went out and, and uh, to some of the local antique mall uh, antique malls in St. Jacobs and things like that and and the one typewriter quickly grew to three or four and uh, then it just sort of went from there and so I started picking up some typewriters that weren't necessarily in perfect working order and and through some different videos online that uh, people put up soon realized that hey I can fix these things then that opened up more ability to pick up more typewriters and bring them home because I could now fix them after a few months I ended up losing my job uh, uh, in the aviation industry and all of a sudden I had more time to collect typewriters so uh, uh, you know I, I, I ended up being home uh, through the pandemic for 19 months and uh, so a friend of ours uh, from our church ended up you know he, he knew that I was into typewriters and so he brought me a couple he said can can you fix these typewriters I've had these for a while and 
And uh, so, so I did, and he gave me some money, and I thought, well, hey, maybe I'm onto something here. And uh, so that, uh, not too long after that, then I launched Willow Creek Typewriters, uh, set up a website, and uh, you know, started putting my name out there, and people started finding me. Uh, and we, you know, now have service typewriters for people, pretty much any, any, anywhere this side of the Greater Toronto area. So literally from Sarnia to Milton to Bruce Peninsula, we've had people come and bring typewriters to be repaired, and uh, we just keep getting calls, and <laughs> it, it doesn't stop. We all have our own reasons for for being into them. Uh, and that's kind of how I got started in them and uh, now it's been over two years and I have close to 70 machines in my own collection. A good typewriter friend of mine, Gregory Short, who is in California, he is the one that launched the, the, the group Type Pals and it had, there's a website typepals.com and uh, that group has been steadily growing. Uh, that's the group that we meet every Sunday online and, and have a four hour plus Zoom call. And uh, the, the, you know, there are Facebook groups where we connect and exchange, you know, hey, look what I found. Or, uh, you know, there's an antique typewriter maintenance group where we can exchange ideas. If, if somebody doesn't know, how, how do I fix this? Then you can usually find somebody that has dealt with that same issue before. And it's just this community where we can share that knowledge there's so many different resources out there now that uh, you know just adds to the the, the love of uh, collecting them and being able to share them type-ins sort of get their origin from you know, back in the 60s there used to be love-ins and sit-ins and different things so type-ins are where we bring typewriters out and uh, to a public space and just invite people to come and experience uh, whether it's the nostalgia or just the, 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 the tactile you know, feel of using a typewriter. Uh, you know, not to try and drum up business or anything like that, but just to share the, the love and enthusiasm that, that we have for typewriters. And uh, these typewriters, many of them have been around for decades and uh, they've been here longer than I've been here and they'll be here long after I will be gone. And I think if, if I can uh, maintain them, look after them, uh, someone else will enjoy them. And because they're not mass producing them anymore, there's kind of a, a finite amount of them out there. And uh, I think that's really important to, to maintain them and let somebody else uh, enjoy them and look after them as well.